God. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. God, we thank you for the thank rain in our lives, oh God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank yes, you, Jesus. Lord. Yes, Lord. Even after the rain comes, we know that God is doing yes. a new thing. Yes. Hallelujah. Rain brings forth growth. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When it's raining, the storms may be coming. It may, be seem, it may seem very hard, but that's the time that God is developing us. And we're moving into a new season. That's a season of growth. And God is doing a new thing in us. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's embrace the new thing that God wants to do. Hallelujah. Thank you.
anointing has never been meant to be just another church on the corner. We were arrested by God to begin this work to do a new thing. We were happy traveling and ministering and doing our thing, Pastor C, family life educators and evangelists, and the Lord arrested us. He put this vision in the belly of Pastor C, and he was afraid to even tell me God was calling us to pastor because he knew I didn't want to pastor. But one night the Lord spoke to my heart and I woke up and I told him what I believed God was saying and he was so happy. He said, thank God he told her. And the Lord brought us to this place. We didn't have any delusions about pastoring. All of our friends were pastors. So we knew the hard places of pastoring. And pastoring is not an easy thing. But I see now that everything that God has brought us through is preparing us for this time. He brings you to a season to the kingdom for such a time as this. That was 23 years ago. And in the first service, we sang, Lord, we acknowledge you. We don't know what to do. Our eyes are on you. And we're still saying that, Lord, we acknowledge you. We don't know what to do. Our eyes are on you. We haven't really seen the vision of fresh anointing manifested yet. Because a lot of times we kept trying to pull back to the old, pull back to the comfortable, pull back to what we knew. But God is doing a new thing. This vision he gave us 23 years ago to Pastor C. He's doing this thing. And we will be a people who will say that he is our God, not man. We will be a people that say, Lord, we're not going to say, give us a king, give us a, a leader like all the other nations. We're going to say, Lord God, you are our God. Only, but only person we need is you, Lord. We're not looking to man or to woman or to politicians or teachers or preachers. Or, it's not about that. We're looking to the Lord. He is the only one. He is sovereign. And he told me to rebuild the altar, repair the altar. The cleansing had to be taken, done, it had to be done. And cleansing in us as pastors, as leaders, as congregants, all of us. Lord, fix us. He's doing a new thing. So we're going to consecrate. If you're able to stand, just stand. And if you want to come to the altar, you can. We just want to ask the Lord to we receive the new thing God is doing. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Bless your name, oh God. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. We're here because of you. These are the last days, and we don't have time to waste with foolishness. We need to be on point, on target. We thank you, Lord. You told us again to focus on you. Our focus is not on man. It's not on flesh. We are to look unto you. You are the author and the finisher of our faith. Father God, forgive us, Lord, for thinking our inventions and our little ideas and our mindsets and our, our negotiations can fix anything. Lord, you alone are God. You are sovereign in this house. You reign in this house. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in fresh anointing as it is in heaven. Deliver us from evil, Lord. Forgive us, cleanse us, wash us in the blood. We consecrate ourselves to you. We say we belong to you. You told me again this morning, I require more of you. I want more from you. Lord God, you 
you want more of our time, more of our talent, more of our focus. Father God, forgive us for making it about other things. And we say we will give you the more. Corporately, we say that. We say you reign in this house. You are sovereign here. Hallelujah. We thank you for your mercy. We thank you for your grace. We thank you for your patience, how you love us and give us another chance again and again. We thank you, Lord, for the tender mercies of God. But we know you're a sovereign God. And we thank you for the privilege to say we will obey. Father God, we humble ourselves before your presence. We acknowledge you in all of our ways. There is nothing we can do without you. We acknowledge you and we say yes to your will. We thank you that you are cleansing and removing the evil altars and evil things of pride and self-righteousness and, and tradition, and religion, Lord God. It's about you. We thank you that you're removing the fears and the worries and the unbelief and the stubbornness, Lord God. It's about you. And you are sovereign. You deserve all that we have. You deserve our best. Everything we have, we bring to you. We consecrate this Fresh and Morning Christian Center corporately. We say yes. We pray that we will individually say yes. But God, as for me in this house, as for Pastor C in this house, we have said together as a couple, this house belongs to you. Yes, Lord. We thank you for your love and your mercy and your grace. We honor your presence. We say have your way. We say yes to the new thing. Have your way. Have your way in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, amen. Bless the Lord. Let's give him some praise. Hallelujah, we bless your name. We believe you, Lord God. You are doing a new thing. Hallelujah, we thank you for your mercy. We thank you for your grace. We thank you. You are our hope and our expectation. Our eyes are on you. We acknowledge you. Thank you, Lord. I've had to really think about do I have a made up mind sometimes we go by our emotions but our emotions fluctuate from moment to moment you can't go by your emotions you got to have a made up mind you got to make a decision of the will I am going to press and complete what God has called me to do I'm going to finish my course I'm going to fight this good fight Make a determination. You got to have that determination. And the Lord has even challenged me in this season. Because I'm going to sing a song that says, If it costs my life, I'm willing to pay the price. He's challenged me about that. Are you really? Or is that just some nice stuff you see in church? If this nation is attacked or if the Muslims come in here and put a gun to your head and say, deny Jesus, are you willing to say, I will not deny Jesus, even if it costs your life? Now is the time to decide that. You don't wait till that stuff comes. You decide, I'm going to make that determination if it costs my life. Jesus. Fe 
it cost my life I am willing to pay the price I have got I have got heaven in my view with a made up mind I've got a made up mind I'm willing to go all the way through and if it costs and if it costs, if it costs my life, I am willing to pay the price. I've got heaven, I've got heaven in my view. Thank you, Jesus. I'm not going to worry about what others may say or do. I've got heaven in my view. I've got a made up mind. I've got a made up mind. I've got a made up mind. I'm not going to worry about. I'm not going to worry about what others may say or do. Think about it. Do you have a made up mind? Do you have a made up mind? Have you determined in your heart that no matter what you're gonna press through? If others may leave, you're gonna press through. Cause Jesus, it's about you. Trust in you, Lord. Elder Kenyatta is going to come and give us some words of encouragement. Thank you, Jesus. Hey, Amen. That's my first time to hear you, Pastor Jay, singing that song. And I love that song. That was awesome. I have heaven in my view. So I'm going to move briskly. Uh, wave at me when I get to my time limit. <laughs> um, I'm still I'm still shaking from what uh, Pastor C said earlier. I wasn't expecting him to name the first one as we need an adversary in order to go through for 22. I wasn't expecting that. But um, as he began to break that thing down, I, I, it made sense to me. Because sometimes we don't pray until adversity hits. Sometimes we don't pray fervently with fire and heat until there's opposing forces. But, but when God gets us in a place where he can get us to pray, then stuff starts to happen. So I thank God for the saints. I thank God for our pastors. I thank God for, for the example that they have set and continue to set for all of us. Lord, we thank you so much for your love and kindness. We thank you for your grace and mercy. We thank you, Lord God, for the power to be able to go through. Thank you for your grace to be able to just wake up in the morning. These are perilous times, oh God. And Father, we thank you for just being there every step of the way. We bless you today, oh God, and lift your name high. 
because you are good and your tender mercies endure to all generations. God, we remember Sister Audrey's mom in prayer today. We pray, Lord, that you would heal her body in Jesus' name. God, we pray for all of those in our midst who are in need of a healing touch, that you will stretch forth your hand and heal in Jesus' name. God, we thank you for the blood that has been applied to us. We thank you that we no longer belong to ourselves, but we are yours. We are yours. God, forgive us of our sins. And have mercy upon us according to your loving kindness in Jesus' name. Have mercy upon us, O oh God. Have mercy upon us, O oh God. Have mercy upon us, O oh Lord. What do you need from the Lord today? He's here. Let's take a few minutes to, to talk to him. Because when it really gets down to it, he's the only one who can fix it anyway. He's the only one who can do it. So let's take a few minutes and I want you to talk to the Lord and tell him what you need. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name we pray. It's in Jesus' name that we pray. Thank God for the musicians who sound good as always. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Amen. And for our praise and worship leaders, thank you for keeping on, keeping on. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. The Lord has put on my heart to give to you. Um, there, there, there are a few scriptures, but I'll read through these briskly, and I'll, I'll trust that the, the, the Holy Spirit will do what he needs to do in order to submit these things in your heart. Um, but before we jump into this, I just want to acknowledge the three angels that the Lord has blessed me with. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> um, Shamalia and Sophia, our firstborn, and Isabella, our second. And those are my three angels. Amen. Uh, yes. 
If you have your Bibles or the Bible app on your phone, you can turn with me to Luke chapter 4, verses 14 through 20. Luke chapter 4, verse 14 through 20. And we'll read a few scriptures here. And this is, it seems to me that, that, that what the Lord has given me is, is, is a footnote to what Pastor has already shared. Luke chapter 14, verses, I'm sorry, Luke chapter 4, verses 14 through 20. And from the NIV version, it reads like this. Jesus returned to Galilee in the power of the Spirit. And news about him spread through the whole countryside. He was teaching in their synagogues and everyone praised him. He went to Nazareth where he had been brought up. And on the Sabbath day, he went into the synagogue. As was his custom, he stood up to read. And the scroll of the prophet Isaiah was handed to him. Unrolling it, he found the place where it is written, The Spirit of the Lord is on me, because he has anointed me to do what? To proclaim good news to the poor. To preach, somebody say. He has sent me to proclaim freedom to the prisoners and recovery of sight to the blind. To set the oppressed free. To proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. And he was reading from Isaiah chapter 61 verses 1 and 2. Then Jesus rolled up the scroll. He gave it back to the attendant and he sat down. Now when I first read that I thought that when he sat down it meant that he was finished. But quite the contrary, because he was just getting started. He was sitting down so he can get comfortable so he can teach, and teach he did. And this is what, I don't have time to go into all of it, but let me just give you the highlights. You only need the anointing if you are helping others. Go back and read what Jesus read when he said, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because you only need the anointing if you are helping others. If you help others in Jesus name, then he will give you the power of his anointing. If you do not help others then you do not need Jesus' anointing. The anointing operates within the context of love. I don't care if you speak in tongues. I don't care if you can prophesy. I don't care if you can lay hands on sick folk and they get up. If you do not love people... You are not laboring under the anointing of the Lord Jesus Christ because his anointing operates, is activated by love. God said, lest you forget. He says, I am love. That's who I am. That's who I am. That's why you're not consumed, because I'm love. The reason why you haven't been destroyed is because I am love. Hallelujah. If you do not love others, then you do not need Jesus' anointing. The purpose of the anointing is not to help you preach better, though it certainly does. But the purpose of the anointing is to help you serve better. And that service is motivated by love. God, sometimes I don't understand. Why do you love the prostitute? Doesn't make sense to me sometimes. God, why do you love the drug addict? Why do you love the dope pusher? Why do you love, why do you love? 
And then the Lord reminded me, why do I love you? Think about it. Think about it. When I found you, even as a child, you were already wayward in your heart. At 10 years old, you were already wayward. And the Lord took me back to some stuff that I had done at 10 years old, and I shudder to think about it now. Some crazy stuff that I did. And he got me before I really got out in the world real good. Because had I been left up to my own devices, there is no telling what I would have done. We only stand today by the grace of God. And if God loved me so much, then who am I to cast judgment upon anybody else? Do you know the same way that God took you and cleaned you up, he can do that to other folk too? All you need to do is stop judging and start loving more. And you don't even have to love in your own strength. All you have to do is allow yourself to be diminished, depleted. Let yourself run out so that the spirit of God can fill you and love people with a genuine love. The type of love that will make your enemies your friend. The type of love that will love people from hellfire to grace and on their way to heaven. The type of love that will transform people. That's the kind of love that we need. Matthew chapter 22 verses 36 through 40. Matthew chapter 22 verses 36 through 40. And it reads like this. Teacher, someone asked him. Which is the greatest commandment in the law? Jesus replied, love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the greatest commandment. But I'm going to give you a two for. The second is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. And Jesus didn't stop there, but he expounded more. He says, all the law and the prophets hang on these two commandments. Lord, what are you saying? The law and the prophets was a short way of referring to the whole of the Old Testament. But if you remember, the Old Testament is all they had when Jesus uttered these words. So in essence, Jesus was saying, if you do these two things, you fulfill the entirety of Scripture from Genesis to Revelation. And here they are. One, love the Lord your God with all of your heart, mind, soul, and strength. And the other is real close to it, just underneath here. Love your neighbor, how? As yourself. And if you do these two things, you have fulfilled the entirety of Scripture. If you love God, that's a good thing. But if you do not love your neighbor... Then here's a revelation. You cannot love God. If you say you love God, but you do not love your neighbor, then you do not love God according to how he looks at love. Matthew chapter 25, verses 31 through 46. And it reads like this. When the Son of Man comes in his glory and all the angels with him, he will sit on his glorious throne. All the nations will be gathered before him and he will separate the people one from another as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. He will put the sheep on his right and the goats on his left. Then the king will say those to those on his right hand, Come, you, are, you who are blessed by my father, 
Take your inheritance, the kingdom prepared for you since the creation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me something to eat. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you invited me in. I needed clothes, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you looked after me. I was in prison, and you came to visit me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you or thirsty and give you something to drink? When did we see you a stranger and invite you in or needing clothes and clothe you? When did we see you sick or in prison and go to visit you? The king will reply, truly, I tell you, whatever you did for one of these brothers and sisters of mine, you did it for me. Then he will say to those on his left, depart from me, you who are cursed into eternal fire, prepared for you, uh, prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry and you gave me nothing to eat. I was thirsty and you gave me nothing to drink. I was a stranger and you did not invite me in. I needed clothes and you did not clothe me. I was sick and in prison and you did not look after me. They also were answered, Lord, when did we see you hungry or thirsty or a stranger or needing clothes or sick? Or in prison and did not help you. He will reply, truly I tell you, whatever you did not do, for the least of these, you did not do for me. Then they will go away into eternal punishment with the righteous to eternal life. Isn't it a sobering thought to think that when you help someone in need, you are actually helping Christ? Isn't it a sobering thought to think that when you are helping the prostitute, the dope pusher, the the alcoholic, that you are actually helping Christ? Isn't it a sobering thought to think that when you help the stranger and reach out to those who are in prison, you are helping Jesus and reaching out to our Lord and Savior. Jesus identifies with the lowly. He identifies with the marginalized. He identifies with those who are at the bottom where he found us. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verses 4 through 5. No one serving as a soldier gets entangled in civilian affairs, but rather tries to please his commanding officer. Similarly, anyone who competes as an athlete does not receive the victor's crown except by competing according to the rules. So then here are the rules. Number one, love God. Number two, Love one another. Let everything you do be motivated and governed by genuine love. And let me close on this last point. Hebrews chapter 12, verses 1 through 2. Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that does so easily entangles, and let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us. Fixing our eyes on Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of faith, for the joy set before him, he endured the cross, scorning its shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. You are only competing against yourself to win You only have to cross the finish line. You are not trying to beat someone else's time. Only to finish the race marked out for you. This is not a quick race. It will take perseverance 
and endurance. So don't run too fast. Get in a nice, comfortable stride and stick with it. A godly routine, as I heard one pastor say. If you fall down, then get back up again. But like pastor said just a few minutes ago, but don't stop. Don't give up. Don't give in. Jesus is waiting for you at the finish line. And help others along the way. You'll notice that when you help others, you yourself will be strengthened in your own race. Along the way, you'll see monuments of glory, but keep running for your life. You'll see trappings of fame, but just keep running for your life. Along the way, you'll see the promise of fortune, but just keep on running for your life. You will see the lure of strange relationships, but keep running for your life. Remember, Jesus is waiting for you. So keep your eyes on the grand prize, for his name is Jesus. Hallelujah. Fresh oil. Hallelujah. This is our all praise and worship. Fresh oil, come up and get ready. All praise and worship, anniversary and communion Sunday. We're doing all three. So we're going to do some more worshiping, get some more of the word. We're going to do communion. We're doing a lot today. But that was a word from God. The Lord's letting us know this is what we're, this is part of the new thing. Not just sitting up in here making each other feel good. Going out, ministering, helping somebody else in the prisons, on the street, feeding the poor, helping people. Just listen to what God is saying. Hallelujah. It's a new season. It's a new day. It's not just about us. Oh, preach me happy, preacher. Uh Uh-uh, it's time for us to get up. We done heard enough preaching in 22 years to run on forever. It's time to get out there. It's time to minister. Even if it's just your neighbor or somebody on your job, somebody that you talk to on the phone, just encouraging people, go ahead, fresh oil. Without you, we bless you, God. We bless you, God. 
God. We bless you, God. We bless you, God. We worship you today. We worship you in this place today. We thank you, God. We thank you. We thank you. Hallelujah.
song simply says, great is your faithfulness. Great is your mercies. Hallelujah. Yo. 
loving kindness towards me. Your tender mercies I see day after day. Bless 
him for the new mercies you saw today. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Happy anniversary, Fresh Anointing. Happy anniversary. Tell somebody, happy anniversary. Glory to God. Sound team, y'all can cue up that video from Pastor Kathleen. She wanted to have, wish, up us, wish us a happy anniversary. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. And then after that, Elder Jenkins is going to take our offering. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Great mercies. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Come on up, Elder Jenkins. Happy anniversary. Happy anniversary. Happy anniversary. Here celebrating with you is Pastor Kathleen from Fresh Start. And guess what? I am so excited and grateful. 23 years. Come on, y'all. Give props to. Yes. Oh, my goodness. What treasures we have in Pastor Clarence and Jayola Walker being faithful. My goodness. 23 years. I am so grateful for the wisdom the knowledge, the counsel, the sacrifice, the love. I could go on and on. Faithfulness that you guys have demonstrated all of these years. And because of what God has formed in you, I can honestly say that I, my husband, our ministry, our family, the things that we have done have been able to advance in the kingdom because of impartation that has come from you. Come on, y'all. Give props due. Yes. Yes. And so we honor you. We bless you today. And I want you to understand my fresh anointing family. Let's show them how much we love them by following passionately after God, being obedient to him and fulfilling all the things that he has been showing us to do. We love you guys so much. Thank you for the prayers. We love you. We love you. We love you. Mm -hmm. Happy anniversary, happy anniversary, happy anniversary, happy anniversary. God bless you. Goodbye. <laughs> Somebody say amen. amen. Hallelujah to the mighty God. Bless the name of God. Yeah, anniversary. You know, anniversaries, people celebrate. I mean, I, I know people when they celebrate anniversary, they party. They party down. And I'm glad that we are here today to celebrate. He said 23 years. Yeah. Yeah. 23, now, the 23 years we've experienced so far, those were great. But the next 23 years are going to be awesome. They're going to be awesome. God is going to do some mighty and great things. Uh, we bless the name of the Lord right now. It's offering time. Somebody say offering. It's giving time. And we are excited about being here with God's people. We are uh, here uh, for a special reason. First and foremost, let me, uh, let me ask you a question. Uh, Fresh Anointing Christian Center, would you consider that good ground? Let me ask again. Is Fresh Anointing good ground? It is good ground. And uh, I was thinking about when the pastor asked me to lift the offering, I thought about some things. I said, uh, truly, Fresh Anointing has been a blessing in the kingdom of God for 23 years. 23 years. Some things don't last 23 minutes. Amen. You're talking about 23 years. That, that's a good ride. That's a good ride. And we thank God. And we thank God first and foremost for God. And we thank God for our pastor, Pastor Jay and Pastor C. Give them a hand clap, please. <laughs> Thank God for the man and woman of God who have been pouring into uh, the body of Christ for years. And they're still standing. And they're still rejoicing in the Lord. And we are excited about what they're doing here at Fresh Anointing. I, I remember uh, when I was coming up to the church, they, they taught me something. They said, if you want uh, to receive great things from God, do great things for God. I heard that. And then my mother uh, would offer her mom, and she said, son, if you need something special from God, seed something special to God. 
And, and when she first told me about that, I really kind of get, didn't get the understanding. But as I got older, it, it came to pass. It, it, that, that was truth of the word. And, and, and when I found that there was something that I wanted God to do. Anybody have a need today? Is there something that you want from the Lord? Yeah, yeah. If you want something from the Lord, sow something, seed for the Lord. I, I, I'm reminded because, you know, in, if we understand what seeds are, seeds hold and they contain that which is new. And before you can receive the harvest, you have to plant it. And you want to seed it into good ground to reap a great harvest. And I asked you before, fresh anointing is truly good ground. Now, with everything that's been going on over the past few years, uh, fresh anointing, there's still needs for the church, many needs for the church. Bills go on, our, our pastors, our leaders, our staff, people are making sacrifices. But what we pray in the mighty name of Jesus Christ that God will touch your heart to plant a special seed. Plant a special seed on behalf of fresh anointing but you are planning it by faith. Planning it by faith because you have a need. There's something that you want from the Lord. And if you plant by faith, believe that God will do it. I like the words of what it says there in, in, in Luke, the sixth chapter. It was Luke who said, he said, he said, now, uh, give and it shall be given unto you. Press down, shaking together, running over. Uh-huh. And it's going to be poured into your lap. And by the measure that you give, it will be given unto you. Planting a seed by faith on behalf of fresh anointing. Now, one of the things we understand about God, okay, we ask for one thing, but he'll move in another way. So we are sowing seeds by faith. So I want to encourage each and every one of you here, okay, to be a blessing to fresh anointing in this season so we can continue to do the things God wants the church to do as we proceed and go forward in the Lord. I would that you stand on your feet as we pray before the Lord. Heavenly Father, we thank you right now. Lord, we come before you, dear Lord. But Lord, your word is true, dear God, dear Lord. For as we sow and seed in the good ground, dear Lord, your promise, the promise that you give us, dear Lord, is that you will return it back to us, dear God, some 30, some 60, some 100 fold. But Lord, we plant, we seed, dear God, in the good ground, dear Lord, fresh anointed, dear God, believing by faith that you will continue to bless this church, dear Lord. We pray in the mighty name of Jesus Christ that you bless those who are able to give above and beyond. Bless those in a, unable to give, dear Lord. Bless your people, dear God. But Lord, dear God, dear Lord, we pray in the mighty name of Jesus Christ that you move. Move, dear God, in the hearts of your people who are moving by faith, dear God. Move in this offering and let it be a blessing, dear God, to fresh anointing and those, dear God, that we will see and sow into for the kingdom of God. Lord, we thank you in advance and we give you the highest praise always. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, dear Lord. We ask you to come as we receive the offering right now. God bless, God bless. Hallelujah. available for you through the whole month of February. You'll be able to give your Victory Miracle Seed offering. And we have some special envelopes we pull out next week. If you didn't see them this week, you can give online. You can send it through the mail. 
Uh, we're trusting the Lord for some miracles. You need a miracle, we need a miracle, and our God is a miracle worker. So ain't no problem. He's an awesome, wonderful God. So we're going to have some quick announcements, and then we're going to get some more ministering in song and in word. Brother Chris. Good morning, fresh anointing. Just a quick reminder, we are still having corporate prayer and Bible study, our, regis our regular scheduled date and times. On Saturday, February 19th at 1 p.m., there is going to be a vintage relationship training by Pastors Clarence and Jayola Walker, growing stronger together. There will be a private premiere on YouTube. We will email you the link if you sign up. You can sign up in the sanctuary or call in and leave a message with your email, phone number, and contact information. Anything else? We will be learning about power and control struggles, male and female differences, blending spiritual gifts, and it is open to all couples. Everyone stay safe and have a blessed week. Amen. The other good thing we have happening is the singles are going to be having a fellowship by Zoom on this coming Saturday. Brother Nick, you'll stand up, Brother Nick. Nick is in charge of our singles ministry. Amen. His assistant is Sister Aaliyah. Stand up. They're going to be working and leading the singles ministry. So next Saturday, they will be having a Zoom fellowship for all the singles. And we just want you to pay attention to your email. You will get the link so you can tune in on Zoom and talk and share about being single and being enjoying being single instead of crying about it. Because we know when it gets to be Valentine's Day, sometimes the singles are like, okay. So we want you to be encouraged. And then that next Saturday, we want the couples to be encouraged. The other thing that's happening is we have our grief support ministry that will, is starting this week um, also. So for those that so many have experienced grief and gone through, it's been a hard place. Those, all of those are announcements are in your email. So please make sure you're, you have, we have your email address. And just check it once a week so you'll know what's going on. Praise God. God bless you. We're going to be blessed now. We have my precious minister. I'm going to call her Minister Nicole. Shake her up a little bit. Minister Nicole is going to come and minister in song. But she's just going to lead us in some worship. Because I know she's going to want us to just worship the Lord with her. And after that, Minister Kirk McNeil is going to bring a word. Brief, short word. And then Pastor C is going to do the communion. So just get me through it. God bless you. Praise the Lord, family. How are you? Happy anniversary. God is so faithful. I am so, so honored again to just be able to worship with you all this morning. Um, God is so faithful, and I am just so honored. I want to take a moment and honor you both, Pastor Clarence and Pastor Jill and my aunt. No. And my uncle, and I am um, just so so grateful for what the Lord has done in all of these 23 years of ministry and these 23 years of this church and this um, just what all, all that God's done and all the things that he's going to continue to do in the future. Amen. We serve a faithful God. We serve a holy God. We serve a good and amazing God. His faithfulness is to a thousand generations. He's the one that causes the mountains to melt like wax before him. There's nothing impossible for him. I want to teach you guys a simple song. I have the honor of worshiping with the Fresh Anointing worship team this morning. Haven't they done a phenomenal job just leading and facilitating the presence of the Lord this morning? Can we give God praise for them this morning? Amen. We honor you guys. Thank you guys for your diligence, for your service. 
and for just ushering us into the presence of God. God, we thank you for your faithfulness. We thank you for your power. We thank you, God, that you're good. We lift up our praise to you. We lift up our adoration to you, God, for you alone are worthy. We sing hallelujah to you, Jesus. You are God, and beside you there is no other. We lift your name that is above every name, the name of Jesus. And we give you all the honor and we give you all the glory today, God. You're faithful. You've done marvelous things whereof we are glad. We honor you, Jesus. We thank you, Jesus. Song says, Hallelujah. Oh, my soul. Jesus, you are holy. 
we see you high and lifted up. Come on, can we can just continue to worship him this morning? Before we go into any other song, God, we lift you up. We lift up our own voices to you, God. And we say that you are holy. We join with all of creation. We join with heaven and earth and we cry, holy God. We cast our crowns at your feet and we say, worthy is the Lamb to receive all of the glory, to receive all of the honor. You are God and beside you there is no other. We bow our hearts before you, God. We thank you for your faithfulness. We thank you for your victory. We honor you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Let's join with him. Yeah. 
I know it's a little bit late, but there's a little bit of something left in you. Can, can you just stand for a moment and just acknowledge the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, that He's faithful, that He's worthy, that He that has begun a good work in you is going to continue even until the day of Jesus, who is our Christ. I'm reminded that there was something that happened when the worship was so good that they couldn't minister anymore. I've decided that I'm not going to share what I was going to share, but I have a minute or so that I'm going to just encourage you in the Lord. You know, God is bringing us through victory in 2022. And I know that there have been some challenges. I know that there have been some things, but I know that God, when he brings us through, it's in order to get to. There are higher heights. There are, the Bible lets us know that he takes us from glory to what? To glory. And I heard something in the service today. Three words that jumped out for me. Seed. Weed. And need. Seed. Weed and need. And I believe what God, what you do with your seed and how you eliminate your weeds and how God is teaching us to deal with our needs will determine how we get through in 2022. The good part of the story is that we have a covenant God. And he's promised that he that has begun a good work in us, he's going to continue to perform it in us. So that it comes in us, it can get through us. In Jesus' name. In that covenant, we have freedom by the body of Jesus being broken. In that covenant, we have access to his life. And that he that hath the Son hath life. We're going to go right in, I believe, into our time of communion. And our time of being able to fellowship and to trust this God that has begun a good work in us. 23 years. Things have been seated in you. Things have been entrusted in you. And I know, I know that I know that I know that what God has started, he will complete. I know that I know that I know that something is being built on the inside of you. I know that I know that I know that there is strength, that there is endurance, that there is power that's being built in you. The Bible says that Physical training is of some value, but spiritual training is value in everything and in every way. I believe the covenant-keeping God is getting to you to get through you in every aspect of your life. I know it to be true. I know it to be true. And we that trust in the Lord and don't lean to our own understanding and acknowledge him in all our ways. He's directing our steps. He's directing our paths. Pastors, as we begin our covenant time of uh, communion, there are two things that I just want to quickly share with communion. Is that communion and the body of Jesus gives us freedom. Freedom from things that kind of have come from our past that try to they used to call this, there was a game called Pac-Man. Y'all remember, remember Pac-Man? And you turn the little, you put the quarter in, and it was a yang, 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 yang. And sometimes the enemy is like that. He's yang, yang, yang. He's, he's nipping at you. He's nipping at you with fear, and he's nipping at you with worry. He's nipping at you with cares. He's nipping at you, telling you you're not good enough, telling you you have nothing in you. Oh, but I know something different that greater is he that is in you than he that is in this world. Freedom. And that we have access. 
access through the blood of Jesus. How are we going to do this? I'll come back another time and share what God's put on my heart, but I know that God's doing a work right now. chapter 11, starting with verse 23, as we prepare our hearts for Holy Communion. Everyone reads, stand, please. And it reads as follows from the NIV version. For I received from the Lord what I also passed on to you. The Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. So then, whoever eats the bread or drinks the cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty of sinning against the body and blood of the Lord. Everyone ought to examine themselves before they eat of the bread and drink of the cup. For those who eat and drink without discerning the body of Christ, eat and drink judgment on themselves. That is why many among you are weak and sick, and a number of you have fallen asleep. But if we were more discerning with regard to ourselves, we would not come under such judgment. Nevertheless, when we are judged in this way by the Lord, we are being dis disciplined so that we will not be finally condemned with the world. So then, my brothers and sisters, when you gather to eat, you should all eat together. I have read for you 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verses 23 through 33 in Jesus' name. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we come to you right now with thanksgiving in our hearts. Grateful and thankful, dear Lord, dear God, that as we stand, dear God, on this communion Sunday, dear Lord, we are here, dear God, humbling ourselves before the mighty God, broken and contrite. But we come, dear Lord, dear Lord, dear Father, to receive that. The elements, dear Father, of communion, can, com communion reminding us, it reminds us, dear God, of what your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, did. For he is the one, dear God, that paid the price for our sins. He is the one, dear God, who shed his blood, his body was broken. He is the one, dear God. And he did it all in love, dear God. We thank you right now, dear Father, for the Savior, Jesus Christ, dear Lord, who showed us his love. Thank you right now, dear God, dear Lord, because we know with certainty, dear Father, that right there at Calvary, dear Lord, he took, dear Lord, and he bore, dear God, dear Lord, our sins, dear God, our doubts, our fears, our weaknesses, our lacks, our sufferings, our pains, our sickness. He took it all upon him, dear God, dear Lord. And we thank you right now, dear God, dear Father, because he rose with power, dear God. We thank you right now for the King of kings and Lord of lords, dear Father, Jesus Christ, dear Lord, who by faith in him, dear Lord, we have forgiveness. 
we have salvation, we have deliverance, we are set free. And we thank you right now, dear God, again. And Lord, dear God, as we continue to go on with you, dear God, Lord, we pray in the mighty name of Jesus Christ that whenever, dear Lord, you choose to sup and dine with us, dear God, reminding us, dear God, through dear God, dear Lord, through the elements, dear Lord, what you have done for us. Help us, dear God, to rejoice in you. Help us to give you glory. Help us to honor you always, dear Lord, again, for what you did for us. Father, we love you. We thank you. We praise you. We lift you, dear God. And we give you the highest praise again, always. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Unto you, Heavenly Father, in the mighty name of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Uh, all right. If you would remove the wafer, peel back, and remove the wafer. That wafer is symbolic of the broken body of the Lord Jesus Christ. He was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquity. The chastisement of our peace was upon him and with his stripes we are healed. So this is a good time to claim your healing because it's part of what Jesus paid for you. All right. Remove the wafer and consume and eat it. I know it was the blood. I know it was the blood. I know it was the blood for me. Without the shedding of blood, there's no remission of sin. So if you take the cup, that grape juice in that cup is symbolic of the blood of Jesus Christ. Drink ye all of it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Die. I know it was the blood. I know it. I know it was the blood. No, it was the blood. I know it was the blood for me. One day when I was lost, Jesus died on a cross. And I know it. The blood came streaming down. The blood came streaming down. The blood came streaming down. Yes, it did. The blood came streaming down for me. One day when I was lost. Wonder working blood, wonder working blood, wonder working blood, wonder working blood for me. One day when I was on, he died on the cross, and I know it. Thank God for the blood. Thank God for the blood. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling, to set you faultless before the presence of the Lord with exceeding joy. To the only wise God, be our Savior, be glory, majesty, dominion, and power, both now and forevermore. Amen. God bless you. You are dismissed.
you are dismissed. God bless you. Greet somebody. <laughs>